Okay, let's look at sweat glands. So sweat glands, you know, we, just, we each have about maybe 3 million sweat glands per, per person, you know, the, 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 the adult. And these sweat glands come on at different times. So this is your skin. You have sweat glands that, you know, that produce sweat down inside the gland itself. And that sweat is released up to the skin. Okay. Directly to the skin. So these sweat glands we call your eccrine sweat glands. Okay. These glands are largely used to keep the body cool. Right? When you're hot, the nervous system causes the cells down here inside the gland to contract, to push the sweat into the duct and up to your skin to cool off by evaporation. So echo sweat glands are always active at, from birth on, so always active. We have some other sweat glands. Let's say that this, this, this is your hair follicle. Let me, let me, this is your hair follicle. All right. Here. And the hair is going through there. Okay. So you have sweat glands that make sweat that's released into the hair follicle. Okay. These we call the apocrine sweat glands. And they start at puberty. This is when they're active. And these sweat glands cause body odor, BO. Okay, they react to sweat from it, kind of fatty, you know, this kind of fatty secretion, fat and protein secretion. And they react with bacteria on the skin to create body odor. The secretions from these earlier ones, okay, are more like the more watery secretion, water. Salts, some ammonia, urea may come out from these. So, so these don't cause body odor. It's these that cause, cause BO. So this is why you, know, why you tend to have body odor after puberty, not before. Then you have other glands called your sebaceous glands. These glands, like fat, they make oil. And these glands also will release their secretions into the, the, the hair follicle. Okay, these are your Sebaceous glands also come on board after puberty. Okay, they make oil. Now oil is what makes, makes your skin greasy. It goes into the hair follicle to, to, to lubricate the hair strength. Okay. Lubricate hair strength. Okay. All right, some other things. You have burns. Walk through something that happens to the skin. So let's look at as you burns. Burns can be caused by chemicals or heat that damage the skin. So remember, you, know, you have your three layers to your skin, right? Epidermis, dermis, hypodermis. All right. So we define burns by how far the damage penetrates into your skin. So burns that only enter the epidermis, they'll call your first degree burns. Burns that go all the way down into your dermis are called second degree burns. And burns that go all the way down into your hypodermis are called third degree burns. So you have three levels of burn. Again, this may seem thick, but it's not, it's, in reality it's not that thick. In your body, this means this, this thin, right? So it takes a second to go from here to here. So don't think you can hang out for a while before you get this kind of burn. It can happen very quickly. The first of your burn is more like a sunburn, okay? Typically, once you get into these areas here, you may require some skin graft to prevent scarring because here you're damaging the stratum germinativum, the area that tends to make new cells. So once it's damaged, it's gonna scar there because you can't, cannot really fully replace the cells as, as they were. And you may also dehydrate because you lose, you lose a, lot of, a lot of fluid once you get down, get down, get down into the dermis and, and hypodermis levels. Again, this is epi, dermis, hypodermis. So that's burns. Now we have a way of dividing the body into nine, into nine percentages or 
multiples of nine. We call it, call it, call it, call it the root of nine. We use this to estimate the extent of burn coverage, right? Burn, the, the extent of, of body surface that, that's affected by burns. So we can do this, this is the head, right? So your upper limbs, upper limbs there, trunk, and lower limbs, right? So we divide up the head, the entire head, region, head and neck, that's 9% of coverage. The upper limbs, front and back, is 9% here, 9% there, front and back, so it's 8. So I said 9, 9 there. The trunk is 18% front. 18% back, okay, the trunk, and the lower limbs are each 18%. And then this perineum area is 1%. So we go 18, 18, 18, 18, plus 8, that's 5, 18, make 90%. That's nine, ninety-nine percent plus one, hundred percent. That's that's how we call it. This is the rules of nine, where we approximate approximate the percent body coverage or body area that, that, that that's affected by, by the burns. Now we also have skin cancers. A lot going on here. So that's next to skin cancers. There's three main types of skin cancer. So, skin cancer. First one is called basal cell carcinoma. This one is the least deadly, but perhaps the most common. Okay. Least lethal. This one occurs when cells from the stratum germinativum become cancerous. So stratum, that low, the lowest layer, layer of, the, of the epidermis. So stratum germinativum cells become cancerous. And then you have squamous cell. Carcinoma. This happens when cells of the stratum spinosum become cancerous. Okay? This one is a bit more dangerous, dangerous than this one. Okay? And then the, the most lethal kind is your malignant. Melanoma. This one normally comes from, again, from the stratum germinativum, usually moles, pre existing moles become cancerous. So, so it, it, it tends to begin moles. And again, the moles are, are basically, basically your melanocytes. So, so here, these are your melanocytes cells becoming, becoming cancerous there. Okay. This one will most dangerous, most lethal. Here the cells spread, so they undergo what's called metastasis. Meaning they can spread around the body. That's why you want to get them quickly, do some chemotherapy, um, radiation therapy, as well as interferon. Just make sure you kill all these cells before they start to spread around the body. Okay, that's it. Thank you.